Hey everyone, Wazoo here, and this is another really fun episode. We're going to be covering the use of scheduled jobs and timers in Java Spring Boot. Scheduled jobs are a common feature of most full stack software that basically runs on the server. These are really handy things that run in the background while your application stack is running. For example, you have payments to process or user jobs to process. Let's say every month you want a job that will run that will delete users that haven't been active for more than 60 days or something like that. There's many use cases for scheduled jobs on any full stack software. So we're going to put together a quick demo. We have three different kinds of scheduled jobs available to us with Spring Boot that come by default with Spring Web, the Spring Framework, that come by default with the Spring Framework. OK, so as you can see, we are on start.spring.io, the starting point for just about every project that we've created on this channel so far. And so we're going to begin with a Maven project. We're going to be using Java version 3.1.1. And we'll just call this one Spring Boot 3 Scheduled Jobs. And we'll be using JAR, Java 17 as a default. So as you can see, I've got the Spring Boot Dev Tools selected, the Lombok, the Maria DB driver, Docker Compose support, Spring Web, and Spring Data JPA. So go ahead and hit that generate button and unzip it to your favorite place on a hard drive, open it in your favorite IDE. Okay, so here we are in the project. We've opened it up in IntelliJ's editor and we've got a basic generated project as we normally do when we open things from start.spring.io. So first things first, we're gonna fill out our compose.yaml file, which is supporting our Docker image. I'm just gonna reuse the same settings that we've done in a previous project, just because the focus of this tutorial is more on the scheduled jobs. So I'll have the source code available via a link in the description down below. So just be sure to check it out and give it a whirl from GitHub. So we've got a basic compose.yaml file. We're gonna create a .env file. And same thing, I'm just gonna cut and paste the same settings that I've done in a previous video. So you're welcome to go through them as you go through this source code on your own. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have three job, three possible scheduled jobs that we can run with Spring Boot. And we're gonna go through an example of using all three. So what we're gonna set up is a server that's running that deals with products. And we're gonna come up with different jobs to handle those products. There won't be any web pages. There won't be any controllers that we'll be using for this tutorial. It'll just be focused around services and looking at those scheduled, scheduled jobs. So first things first, let's create a model. So in your scheduled jobs folder, let's create a new package and we'll just create a product model. I'll cut and paste the product model that I'm using for this. So as you can see, we're using the at entity at data annotations from Lombok. We're generating an ID. We've got a name, description, and quantity fields, along with a price and timestamps for the created at and updated at. We'll need our repository interface defined. So let's go ahead and create a new package called repositories, and then just create a new interface called product repository. And this is just our, again, this is just our interface with the database. Finally, we're gonna create a product service, which will handle Working with the, jo the jobs will make use of the service as well as using the interface that we just created for the to the repository. So we'll create a new package here called services and create a product service. And this will just be a basic service that performs some CRUD operations for dealing with our product. So we'll just use the service annotation and we'll auto wire it in the product repository and we'll now use a, we'll make it, we'll create a get all method. So return product repository 
find all, and then we'll create a, a get by ID. So basically get a single product given a specific ID. Okay, and then we're gonna create a save, save method, sorry, product, product. So if the product doesn't yet have an ID, then make sure to update the timestamp and then make sure to update the other timestamp with just local date time now for both. And then return the saving. Okay, so you you may have seen these before. We've gone through the same service quite a bit on several of my videos here on the channel. And essentially, again, all we're doing is creating some CRUD operations. We're creating a way to retrieve all of the products from our database, find a specific one by its ID, and then persist any new ones that we've created into the database. So now what we're gonna do is take a look at the actual cron, cron jobs that we can set up. So what I've decided to do for this tutorial is create a, another service, and I, I called it product inventory job. And let's go ahead and use the service annotation. And there is a popular naming convention usually among server-side frameworks. I know in the Rails world, jobs that run as background tasks, which is what we're looking at here, often have job in the title. So in this case, product inventory job matches the same convention that Rails applications use. For Spring Boot, I'm gonna maintain this use of the word job in the service class name, which gives you the hint that this is of what the purpose of this class is. So we're gonna be pulling in through AutoWired the product service that we just created. And then we're also gonna be pulling in, not pulling in, we're gonna be defining a log interface, a log instance. And this is just to make sure that we can highlight when things are being run via our schedule timers. We have three different options for schedule jobs in Spring Boot. We've got what's called a fixed delay. We've got a fixed rate and we've got what's called a cron. A fixed delay will, in a fixed delay scheduled job, Spring Boot will fire it at whatever interval you give it, but each job will wait for the previous one to finish before it executes the next one. So we need to use the scheduled annotation, and then we define in brackets which of the three we are using. So in this case, it's fixed delay, and I just used 5,000, actually let's make it 2,000. So this number is, is milliseconds. So 2,000 milliseconds, so two seconds. Okay, you know what, better make it five. And then let's create a method here called add sale product. So the only purpose of this job is to create a sale product every five seconds. So let's do a product product. Let's create a new product instance, and then let's set the name of it to be sale product. And then let's generate a random integer that we can create with this one. We can call this one. So we'll just use random next int and give it a bound of 99, something pretty simple. And then we'll set a description here. We'll set the price to be 99 cents. Remember that's a double and we will set the quantity to be a random integer of something up to 50. And then we will save it with our product service. And then finally we will output it into our log. So log.info added new sale product. And then let's spit out the product into the log file. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. It looks like everything we need to do. Now, before we actually use anything in the scheduled annotations, there's one configuration annotation that we have to put somewhere. A lot of full stack applications will create a config, similar to many configuration setups that we've done on previous tutorials on this very channel. So let's create a new package and we'll just call it config. and we'll create a new class and we'll just call it scheduler config. And all we do, all we need to do is add a few annotations here. So we'll 
This is a configuration. That way it's loaded up during instantiation of the Spring Boot server. And we want to enable scheduling. And that's it. So let's go back to our product inventory class and let's go through our method here again. So we're creating a new instance of product. We're setting a name for it. And then we set a description for it. We set a price to be 99 cents and then a quantity, a random quantity up to 50. We save it in the database and then we output it in the logs. So why don't we go ahead and let's start it up. Okay, so as you can see right here, we've got our job running and every five seconds it's creating a new sale product. Okay, cool. So that's one way to run a job. And the next one we're gonna try out is one that's called fixed rate. So the difference between fixed delay and fixed rate is that fixed rate will fire no matter what. So if you have a job that runs every 10 seconds, then that job will execute no matter if the previous one has completed yet or not. So let's go ahead and use the scheduled annotation again. And this time we'll be using fixed rate and we'll give it a, let's do every 10 seconds. So 10,000 milliseconds. And in this one, we're just gonna add another new product. I'll call the method add new product. And so let's just cut and paste what we have up here. And this time we'll, we will just uh, adjust the price to be something like 499, just so we can recognize it. And this won't be a sale product. This will just be a new product. So we'll take out the sale and new product. So this is a new product and we'll, let's create the upper bound for our quantity to be something to 99. So a random integer between one and 99 or zero and 99, I guess. And this will demonstrate the use of fixed rate. Now, one thing that we can do that the scheduler, one thing we can do to take advantage of this fixed rate running in the background on a new thread every 10 seconds, in your scheduler config, you can use the annotation called enable async. And this will make sure that we've got a Spring Boot will create a different thread for each execution of this scheduled job. So that way we can use the async annotation on our job function, as well as the enable async annotation in the config setup. We've added the product here. So the product, remember, um, this was the asynchronous. This was happening every 10 seconds. Okay, so we've had a few products run. Why don't we check the database and check the timestamps there and see if they're close to those delays that we've introduced in our setup. And let's go to localhost 80, port 8081, where we have the PHP MyMin setup and we log in with spring underscore user, which is what we defined in our .env file and spring underscore password. Okay, why don't we sort by timestamps? Okay, so new product, 1526. Okay, here we go. So we've got 15, 155, 26. Let's blow this up a little bit. So we've sorted by the created at timestamp. So we've got one product created at 15, 1555, 26. And then the next one from 1555, 16. And then 155.06. So yeah, so these ones are running every 10 seconds as we set up in the cron job. And so that you can tell that from the timestamps in the database here. Cool, that's looking really good. And so the last way we can run a scheduled task is called what's called a cron. And a cron is taken from the old Unix, Linux system environments where you could run scheduled jobs on a server which of course still run today all the time um, at a system level, but this is sort of ported over, this expression system is ported over to most full stack frameworks, Spring Boot included. 
And so for that, we use the scheduled annotation again, and this time we use a cron, the cron label. And so this is where we give it a cron string. And to create that string, we go to a website called crontab.cronhub.io. And so we enter in, we're able to enter in um, each, each of these fields separated by space represents a, a specific slice of time. So we've got, uh, we can define minutes, hours, days of the month, month, days of the week. So for example, we can set up something that runs every Friday at three o'clock or maybe even once a month. So every first of the month, every 20th of the month, let's say if you're running payroll, for example. So we're going to create a cron expression where we want to run every, uh, let's say, not 30 minutes, I want 30 seconds. So we are missing one star here. There, every 30 seconds. So we've got a star slash 30 for 30 seconds. If we want 15, we can just change this from a 30 to 15. And this will give us every 15 seconds, etc. So every 15 seconds, let's just go ahead and cut and paste this string and use it as our cron expression. And I think I'll cut and paste the link to that website right in the code because it is much easier to remember later on coming back to this. Okay, so this one, we are going to count what we have in our inventory. That's what we're gonna do. So every 15 seconds, we are going to just display a total of something. So let's grab a list of the products that we have at that snapshot in time. So product service, get all. And then what we want to do is we will need to use what's called an atomic integer. And all, all we're going to be doing here is creating a, um, we're enumerating through the list of products that we get back and then keeping track of our quantity that has been added so far. And so for this help, we need what's called an atomic integer with an, so we have an initial value of zero. And then all we're doing is we're going through each product in that collection. We're grabbing our quantity from each one and then adding, totaling it all up together. And then what we're going to do is just display it into the log file. Curly braces products with a total inventory size of another squiggly brace. And so this time we're going to use, so all we're going to display here is the count of products that we have in our database along with the total inventory size. So basically the, the total product count uh, given each quantity of single product. We're just gonna display that in the log message. So go ahead and start it up and then let's keep an eye on the log file for that message. Okay, so as you can see here, 77 products with a total inventory size of 2,882. Okay, so let's wait for another one. Oh, here we go. 81 projects with a total inventory size of 2,973. And there we go. So those are the three cron message scheduled task messages that we can set up. So those are the three scheduled tasks available to us for running jobs in a Spring Boot server. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember the code is in the description down below and give this video a like if you liked what you saw. Subscribe to the channel for notifications on other videos that I put together and we'll see you in the next one, folks. Peace.